Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, and today we have an NC State Commit Round Table. I have got Ryan Weaver, Michael Cotter, Lance Norris, Kyle Ponsler, who hasn't even officially announced his commitment yet. He will have by the time this comes out. got four male NC State commits before we get into before I let you guys talk I'm, I'm gonna give a little bit of background um, if you weren't reading swim swam last week we we got a flurry of NC State commitments uh, Saturday August 29th uh, Lance Norris and Michael Cotter became the first two of our top 20 high school class of 2022 to make their verbal commitments they both committed to NC State. Uh, they are teammates on the TAC Titans based out of Cary, North Carolina. Uh, soon after that, uh, I think the same day, Ryan Weaver out of Durham, North Carolina, also made his verbal commitment to NC State. And uh, as I said, now we've got Kyle Ponsler, who lives in Fishers, Indiana, uh, joining the bandwagon as well. So guys, uh, we'll go one at a time. Uh, Lance, I'd like to start with you. Um, tell me about y your decision to uh, commit to NC State at, at the time that you did. Um, yeah, so as the recruiting process was going along, um, I really liked State from the beginning. And I'd gone to camps um, at NC State prior, so I, had, I really knew the coaches really well. So um, my friend Alex um, – we went on a visit unofficially with him and some of the team. It was me and Michael, and that was the weekend before the 29th. So, you know, like seven days. Um, so we went. Uh, I had a really good time. Um, it was really fun seeing the campus. We weren't allowed to go in that many buildings, so um, just kind of walked around and saw where everything was. Then – that night, I think Braden texted me and asked uh, if I like would do a Zoom with my parents, um, you know, on Sunday. And then, you know, and we talked and, you know, he offered me a scholarship. And I think, you know, thinking about it, I was like, you know, it was in state. It was like kind of like my backyard, like growing up there, being really familiar. So um, I think – you know, the next day I told him that I was going to verbal there. So it was a funny story. Like Michael told me like a, like a few minutes later that he wanted to do it at the same time, but I, um, I, I like did it really fast. So <laughs> <laughs> tried to beat him to the, uh, <laughs> yeah. to, the to the post. Um, Michael, great segue into you. T tell me a little bit about your decision uh, and your commitment process. process. Yeah, so mine was re really similar to Lance's um, whole process because State was one of my top schools going into it. Um, I had a prior, like a list of schools I was interested in before June 15th. Um, so yeah, I, State was already really high on my list and I really liked the coaching staff. They're like super energetic and um, I already knew some of the kids on the team like Alex Tomlinson, Mikey Moore. Um, so I was really close with them and then you know, we were really fortunate to be able to go on an unofficial visit. And, um, you know, I loved everything that I heard and saw on that visit. It was really like one big family is like the, is the best way to describe it. And then, um, yeah, after that visit, I was kind of like uh, texting Lance, trying to see if he felt the same way, and he did. So, um, yeah, I uh, let Braden know that I wanted to commit after a Zoom that I had with him where uh, he offered a scholarship, um, you know, same as Lance. Um, and, uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, Ryan, let's, let's just move right along to you. <laughs> give, give me, um, give me your summary of the commitment process. So, yeah, uh, a couple weeks before they, um, they took their, uh, on un unofficial visit, I was very fortunate enough to, uh, have, uh, Sam Hoover, another, uh, commit, um, for a class of 2021, he took me around NC State campus. We got to salt, uh, see some of the team, and it was just 
from that point on, I knew like it was NC State was my top choice, and it was just something that would get just to tip the tip the scale, you know. And when I heard that State got two uh, two guy commits for class of twenty twenty two, and I found out that it was uh, Lance and Mike, I was just like, why not? So I hopped on a hopped on a Zoom call, and ironically, that same Zoom call, Braden um, offered me a scholarship then too, smaller side, but still uh and then i was just that same zoom call i was like let's do it let's go i'm ready to go so it was kind of um an awesome experience uh getting to commit with uh these two guys in state and then now having kyle come 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 up from indiana out of nowhere honestly but it's awesome uh ironically i've I've done a lot of nc state zooms this week yesterday i talked to sam hoover yesterday uh that's awesome yeah he's great uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for all you guys. Uh, and then, then Kyle, uh, again, you haven't officially announced your commitment yet, right. but, um, tell me about your recruitment process. Right. So I think something for me is that every time I got on the phone with someone, um, it just, they jumped higher and higher up my list. And I think that I formed a, you know, a really good connection, um, with the coaching staff. And I think that, you know, my coach talked to their coaches and it went, you know, really well. And, Um, So everything um, from that side of things was, you know, just awesome. And then um, I flew out um, last weekend and I actually flew out Sunday morning and came back Monday afternoon. So it was like a pretty quick trip, but um, I went and saw the campus on Sunday and um, we actually went to to the beach that night. And um, so I was like, I love it here. I, you know, I loved everything that I saw the, you know, the connection with the coaches, the team was there. I just knew that I, you know, I really wanted to be there. And then, um, while we were, you know, at the beach, we, you know, had a zoom call with Braden and same, same thing, scholarship, um, all that. And it was, you know, I was, uh, ready to go right after that. And, um, I committed yesterday. So, um, not officially announced yet, but, um, can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so congratulations to all you guys. Uh, we again, we saw this a similar phenomena happen last or about a year ago with with Sam Hoover and his class, which included you know uh, David Curtis, Arsenio Bustos. You got like five different guys. Um, a lot of a lot of which were in our top twenty recruits. You know, they just committed one after the other. Um, so it's very cool to see NC State's doing it again. And uh, with, with a lot of you guys who are super, super local. Um, now, uh, I'll, I'll go in the reverse order for this time for this question, but um, Kyle, tell me a little bit about what your club team is like um, and what, what your swimming background is like. And, and uh, if, if you looked at other schools or, or, or NC State was kind of, you, you knew right away. Right. So, yeah, I, you know, like you said, I'm from Fishers, Indiana. I swim for Fishers Area Swimming Tigers. I've, um, you know, I started lessons there when I was four years old, um, joined the team when I was six, and it just kind of went from there. It's a it's a great club. Um, my head coach, um, Joe Keller, I, you know, owe everything and my success and my team's success to him. Um, it's, you know, we have a really good thing going on here, especially for being a, you know, a little smaller of a club. Um, not super small, but, you know, um, I think that we do things really well here and I'm really, you know, grateful for everything that, um, he's done for me and the rest of the coaching staff. And I think that, um, you know, looking at other schools, I did have a few other schools that I was looking at. Um, but like I said, every time I talked with NC state, it just, you know, it blew me away and it, I just knew it was something that I really wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Ryan. Uh, so yeah, you, are from Durham. Uh, you swim with the Carolina Aquatic Team. Um, tell me mm-hmm. a little bit about you know your aquatic history and, and how you ended up where you are. Um, so yeah, I when I was five, I started doing uh, swim lessons and stuff, learned how to swim. Uh, joined uh, Carolina Aquatic Team. It was back then. It was uh, called Duke Aquatics. Um, joined the team. Uh, just have swam ever since then. Um, my aquatic experience is kind of interesting to say because um the head coach of our team is actually my dad okay um and it's kind of uh he's been my coach for a decent amount of time now and it's uh we have a 
a really good re- relationship to where we can just we work well together and it's not too much at home it's not too much at the pool it's it's the right amount at the right times you know and i just i i've used him and both my parents swam and i've used them as uh as examples going through my um recruiting process and it's just been such a um great ride to go through and have them uh help me through this. Uh, but yeah, I owe them all, all my coaches that I've had in the past. I definitely owe them a lot through to get to this point. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. And then we've got the two tack Titans, Michael. Uh, yeah. Again, just a little bit of your club experience, uh, being, being from Cary. Uh, I know, I know that there's a lot of, there's a lot of options for club teams in that area. Tell me a little bit about your swim background. Yeah, so I was actually born in Connecticut, and that's where I started swimming competitively when I was like seven um, with the Ridgefield Aquatic Club. Um, then when I was like 10 years old, I uh, moved to North Carolina, moved to Cary, and um, joined the TAC Titans. And uh, yeah, I was with Coach Rob Norman. He's awesome, and uh, I really love the coaching staff there. Um, and I'm coached by Coach JP and um, Coach Bruce right now. And I mean, it's just an awesome coaching staff. And the kids that I have to race during practice, like um, Lance and Braden Hoffy, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better group um, to train with and, you know, better coaching staff. So, yeah, I mean, I love it. And, you know, you couldn't pay me to go to a different team. So, yeah. Uh, Lance, same question. Uh, yeah, so I started actually in Rocky Mount, which is like about an hour away from Cary. So I still live there. So I commute like about like an hour every day. So um, I swam with RMY until I was uh, 15 and um, I made the like the move to TAC. Um, it was a lot different. Um, RMY was really good with like technique. So um, my technique was really good. And then when I went to TAC, I was looking for, like, the volume and the intense training, and it really, like, it really helped me. I improved a lot last summer as well. And, like, going off of Michael, like, the coaching staff was just great. Like, um, they really – they just made it – well, I don't know how to say but, like, you just know what you're working toward, and you know, like, everything has a purpose in the practice. Um, and then, like, going off of what Michael said, like, that training group is – crazy like and not just me and Brayden but also like we have Ashley Twitchell as well um Christian who's I think on the Puerto Rican national team and we've got some guys from Princeton who are training with us right now so um it's just a really great group right now and um something funny uh like sometimes me and Michael are racing um stuff gets a little too fast than it should be so (laughs) the whole main set will just end up being one big sprint so it's really fun. It, uh, I mean, from that, I've, I've heard college students say that before, you know, like you talk to any guy from Texas, uh, and, 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 and they'll certainly say, you know, oh yeah, like they, they don't let us, or like, you know, even recovery days we'll be racing. And, uh, it's funny because, because talking to Bruce, um, he does a really good job for, from what I've seen at setting kids up for college and creating an environment where, like you said, you're pretty clear on what your intentions are and what, what you're trying to do there. Um, so let, let's get into training a little bit. Um, you know, you said Lance, again, we'll, we'll start with you, go down the line. Um, you said you moved to tack to get a little more intensity and, uh, looking at your times right now, I feel like that's shown you, you're 1505 in the mile, you're 351 in the 400 I am. Um, I mean, you, your sprints are not too shabby as well. 21-4, 46-3 in the 50 hundred. You know, you've, you've got, you've certainly got range and you've certainly got a lot of, a lot of really solid strokes. Um, what would you say y- your favorite events are uh, to, to race and to train? Um, yeah, so I've always liked the mile. Um, I I got into the mile when I was like 13 and like, I, I think the first few times I swam it, I got like really bored. So I just, <laughs> I just end up like not really caring about it too much, but um, yeah, definitely the mile and 400 I am are really good ones. Um, the practices are really grueling, but I love it. And you know, 
like like I said before, like having Braden and Michael there, like it's it's just it's just a race and everything. So um four hundred nine and mile are definitely my favorite events and I think as a distance gets like you know, as distance goes up, like the better I'll be at it. So Yeah. Uh Michael, switching on to you. Uh, let's, let's brag on you a little bit. So e- equal range, um, 425, 500, 136, 200 free, 44, 800 free, 21, 50 free. You've got solid breaststrokes, solid butterflies, solid IMs. I mean, I'm looking and it doesn't look like you have a weak spot here. Um, so Michael, again, f- favorite events to race, favorite events to train for. Um, I'd say, Top three favorite events to race are definitely the two free, um, definitely the five free, and then I'd probably throw two IM in there. Um, and then as far as training goes, um, I, I'm always in the distance group with um, Braden and Lance. Um, I mean, I can kind of hang with them. I know if I'm going to be doing like a – I know if it's like a 500, it's going to hurt a lot, especially with Lance. Um, and then IM training, I've been trying to focus a lot more on IM this season um just kind of branching out because i don't want to just be a freestyler um so i was trying to diversify and i've been really enjoying im practices um and then like my whole swimming career i've like hated im i was like im practice used to be the practice where i was like getting beat on everything and then kind of changing that up going into um you know this season i felt really good about my im and i think it's shown in my races as well yeah it, I, I would say it's sort of, from the outside looking in, it seems like it's shown in your races. Uh, Ryan, moving on to you, you're the, you're the 4A state champion in the 50 freestyle. Uh, Hunter back runner up. You've got a 20.6 50 free, 46 0 100 free. You got 49 and 149 in the backstrokes, 23 3 in the 50 back. That's, you know, you, you, you've got a little more speed, it looks like. Uh, same question. Do you, I mean, are you, are you a classic fast, fast twitch free and backstroker? Tell, give, give me the T. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely one to, uh, love to train speed. I'm always one to love, do love to do starts dives from practice. It's just, that's to me, it's, that's the fun part of practice. Um, top my, I'd have to say now my favorite event to race is probably tied between 50 free and hundred back. Honestly. They're just so fun just to get up and go, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, Kyle, we're back to you. And, you know, I think it's easy to forget for some people that, that uh, recruiting and committing uh, are, are, are being pushed to such an early age now. You guys are just entering – all of you are just entering your junior years of high school. Um, Kyle, you you recently had a time trial where you went four best times. Uh, we reported on it, and uh, I didn't even recognize your. They they Lance had asked, "Hey, can Kyle Ponser come on?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, definitely." And then I I didn't recognize your name. And then when I went to go see who you were, I was like, "Oh, this is the kid who went freaking four best times. He uh, he crushed it in like every event he swam at this time trial. And that included hundred back, hundred free." 100 meter free, 200 meter backstroke. Uh, you got a slew of best times in all of them. So, uh, you know, training wise, race wise, what are your favorites? Right. So, yeah, that time trial was definitely a pleasant surprise, I'd say. Um, you know, especially for not really being rested that much. Um, I'd say, you know, I gravitate towards more of the upper middle distance, um, 2 IM, 4 IM, 2 back. Um, so, I think, you know, like they said, just kind of branching out a little bit and not really focusing on one thing and just trying to become the most, you know, versatile swimmer that I can be. Um, so yeah, I, I really love training. I am, I think that that's something that, um, you know, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm pretty versatile. So just being able to train every stroke and, um, whether that be distance sprint, um, in the middle, I think, you know, just doing a little bit of everything is probably what I, I like to do the most. Yeah. And uh, sticking to that, the topic of that time trial, uh, let's move on to, to the last five, four or five months for everyone. Um, obviously, it's been a weird time and everyone's been in different circumstances. Uh, I talked to Lance uh, a few months ago on a Zoom and got a little update from what he was doing as well as, um, you know, a few of his teammates 
uh, Claire and Charlotte, but um, Kyle, you know, leading up to that time trial, what has your quarantine training in and out of the pool looked like? Right. So, um, you know, I'd say that we've been more fortunate in the way that um, we didn't shut down as much as, you know, a lot of places did. Um, so we were only out of the like actual pool or high school pool for um, a month or so. And then we got to train in the YMCA for every week except like two weeks. So, um, yeah, we got, you know, our coaches were sending out workouts. We were obviously still, you know, very careful with things. But um, when everything was shut down, we have, um, well, I have a Michael Phelps swim spa in my backyard. So um, got to use that a little bit. And it's actually funny. So like I would swim at the, you know, we'd put it as high as it could, but I could, you know, if I was trying to sprint, I could still out swim it. So I had to tie a tether to a tree and then I would swim with the tether. And so, yeah, that was one thing that we did. And then um, while everything was um, fairly shut down um, and I was just seeing like a few people, we always had like a challenge that we tried to do. Like a, we did a half Ironman, me and my little friend group. So um, we did that one day and that was really hard. Um, I really underestimated it, but um, yeah, just little things like that. And then Zooms with um, the team and uh, doing like dryland workouts. Okay. So just so we're clear, half Ironman. <laughs> Yeah. It's a 1.2 mile swim, which for, for any swimmer is like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that uh, was the easy part. 56 mile bike ride and a 13.1 mile run, which is a half, you finish off with a half marathon. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank what? You. Wh why did you guys, how did you guys land on that? And, and give me a, a little more detail because that, I mean, that sounds pretty grueling. Yeah. So we were, I don't know. I don't, I don't really remember how it exactly came up, but mm -hmm. we decided we're like, okay, we'll get a few people and we'll do it. And so we went to one of my friends, um, like backyard pool and we measured it and we were like, okay, so to hit the 1.2 miles or whatever, we have to do like 160 five laps or something like that so we like figured this whole thing out we had like a 20 20 some mile bike loop that we did twice and then the run was you know we that hurt a lot it was like 95 degrees by the time we finished so that was that was probably the hardest part I was not having fun with that but um yeah it was a really really fun experience and I'm, I'm honestly like glad that I did it looking back and then the rest of the day we just chilled by the pool and you know it I was, my body was hurting quite a bit for the next few days. I, I can imagine. I think it's hilarious that you guys did the swim, not in like a lake or like an open water, but in a backyard pool. Right. <laughs> um, well, that's, that's awesome. And obviously that paid off <laughs> right. in your time trial. That was probably all, all that half Ironman training. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, all right, Ryan, g give me your update. Uh, how, how are you training during quarantine in Durham in and out of the pool? Um, so for us, uh, I feel like in North Carolina, we were on the uh, very fortunate side. Uh, we, were all, we were out for two months, I think. Uh, we started up uh, beginning of June. So we had like a two-month summer just getting back into it. Um, some people were not feeling the best. Uh, uh, some people were feeling really good. It was just we were kind of limited on time and uh, pool space because it's in Durham. There's not many pools that you can find that are open with a good amount of lane space. So that was tough to find. So we, we kind of had a couple groups rotating out each practice. So we'd have one group in the water for an hour and then another group doing dry land for an hour. So like running or abs or plank, plank routine or jump routine. We did that for a good amount of time. Um, we had two weeks off for vacation, and then now we're back in the water getting ready to see if we can have some meets coming up, uh, hopefully. Uh, didn't We didn't have the chance to get any time trials in, but we did have a couple of dives from the pool, which were pretty exciting. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. How Would you be comfortable sharing any of your dive times? How'd they go for you? Um. So we did a couple dives, uh, a couple hundreds from a dive, the last practice we had before the two-week break. Um, and uh, we had old suits on, just get in, ready to go, 10-minute warm-up. And uh, I did 100 back in a 57. This is short course meters, by the way. Sorry. Okay. okay. For those who don't know, short course meters. 
went 57 in the 100 back and went a 53 for 100 free from a dive. So kind of exciting, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's short course meters for people in the United States is so fun because you don't really have a gauge on like what that means or how that might translate, but yeah. you almost always go a best time. So mm-hmm. kind of a win-win. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so Michael and Ryan, I, I have, a, or sorry, Michael and Lance have a little bit better of an idea of uh, you guys' results because we were reporting on them uh, pretty much every week. Uh, you guys had a couple time trials, and I think both of you went a slew of best times. Um, Michael, we'll start with you. Tell me, tell me about um, what you did out, out of the water, what you guys did back for training, and then how your racing went. Yeah, so when we were out of the water, I mean, I got our wetsuit like right away. And then, I mean, just swimming open water. I mean, the water was really cold. It was like burning my face. It was so cold. Um, but it, it started to warm up towards the end. And then just doing dry lands and weights at home. Um, you know, that was mainly what I was doing during the time we didn't have pool time. And then once our team was able to get back in the water, um, we did a, it was kind of like one person per lane. And then it was like two starting at opposite ends. And now we're up to like three, which is like two on one end, trying to stay far apart. And then one on the other end. But, um, yeah, I'd say the first week back of, um, kind of like just swimming open water, it was like the hardest training week of my life. I was like, just try and keep your technique together and finish this practice. Um, but that after that week, um, I'd say I had the best few weeks of training like in my life. I think that, you know, having that break was kind of like a nice like reset button, kind of like time away from the pool. Um, and then so I had a ton of awesome practices after that. And then, um, yeah, we were fortunate to be able to race. And um, we actually had quite a lot of meets. I think we had three meets and their last two were pretty close together. Um, so, yeah, I went some awesome times at those meets, and I'm really happy with it. And, um, yeah. Uh, I know one headline we wrote was Michael Cotter swims class of 2022's best 200-yard free on Saturday in North Carolina. That was August 8th, 2020. Uh, you mentioned that uh, that was your favorite event to swim, and uh, you went 136.4 to free. Dropped a, dropped half a second, uh, so it yeah. seems like it went pretty well. <laughs> yeah, um, I was like going into that. I was like a thirty six nine before that, and I was like, did I just get lucky and like and barely go sub one thirty seven? But um, no, I went thirty six four after that. So I was like, okay, I'm safe one thirty six zone. And then I actually tried to do it again the next weekend because I like missed my last wall so I tried to do it again but like the day before the meet I was like, running down this hallway and I just slammed my toe into the wall and it was like <laughs> it was like swelling and I was black and blue the next day and I had a call with Braid in the day of the meet and I was like yeah it hurts to walk I don't think I'm going to be racing today and I like I was like taking a ton of ibuprofen and I brought like a cooler to the meet with like ice in it and I would ice my foot like right before I raced and I ended up going like 36, five with, I don't know if the toe was broken or not, but it hurt. So, um, yeah. Well, just goes to show you, be careful when you're running down hallways, kids. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But but it also goes to show you that if your toe is super swollen and you're injured, you can still almost go best time. Uh, all right. And, and Lance, Again, I know I talked with you a little. I think I think you were doing open water as well, but you know, get get recap it for me. Give me a brief synopsis of uh, what yeah. what it was like when you got back in the pool and how you felt uh, when you finally got to race again. Yeah, so um, very similar to Michael, just like open water and dry land. I I did like a ton of open water. Um, actually, the Saturday before we started back, I did a. Um, I did a 12k, so that was that was an experience that took a really long time, but it was really <laughs> fun. Um, the first week I got back, I felt like I felt really good. Like I was like surprised, surprising myself because I was going like times that I was going before quarantine, so I was like really happy and excited. And honestly, it just it kind of got better from there. It's like what Michael was saying, I had some of like the best sets. Of, like my career so and then when racing started it 
racing started, it really showed like, um, I, I dropped in a lot and it, it was just really like good to see all that work paying off. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, <clears throat> again, headline we had for you, hot handed Lance Norris swims two more best times on Friday. Um, it, it looks like you guys all benefited pretty well from, from that break. And it looks like a lot of athletes have, uh, honestly, um, which is exciting for, for our sport in general, exciting for you guys moving forward. And, you know, you, you've, you've still got two more full years of high school um, where you can make a lot of big improvements before uh, head, heading off to NC State. Um, we're, we're down to about five minutes, and I'm nervous about this, but I think we can do it. I'm going to ask you guys, just, just for fun, uh, favorite swimming story, favorite race you've been a part of, you've witnessed, it can be your favorite swimming memory. It's got to be 60 seconds or less because we're trying to fit four in here. Uh, would anyone like to volunteer to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll go just because, like, this was really recent. And there's probably a lot of others that I could talk about, but this one's just more, like, in my mind. So as Michael was talking about, like, his broken toe for the <laughs> – 200 free so he was actually doing it in the middle of a 500 so it was really funny to see him like stop at the 200 to go really easy. and um like everyone had finished and the official came up to him and was like you still have like another like 50 because you didn't do the whole 500 so like I was walking down because I was about to warm up for the 200 I am I just see Michael like slowly going back uh for his last 50 so that was really funny <laughs> the broken toe <laughs> the yeah. broken toe 500 going for the 200 split love it uh anyone else i'll go um so uh, probably my favorite um my favorite race was two years ago now honestly um i was swimming one of juniors in greensboro and um just swimming the 100 back out of lane eight and just seeing what I can go and then just seeing the fact that, uh, I got the state record, um, with a 49, nine, four, I think it was. So that was kind of cool to see that, uh, just out of nowhere on my birthday, um, getting a state record. So for 13, 14, so it was kind of hype. Uh, you know, that's probably one of my favorite races to this day, honestly. De- 49, nine birthday swim for your 14th birthday. How? Yeah. That's, that's, that yep. certainly sounds like it takes the cake, pun intended. Uh, Kyle, Michael? I'll, I'll go. So, All right. so um, actually, this is kind of like the broken toe, except I had a broken hand. So when I was like 13, um, I got kicked with a fin at practice and broke my hand, and they said that I needed to be in a – like a little – it's not like a real cast, but like a, like a softer version of a cast for a mm-hmm. few weeks. and we had like a inner squad meet and I had to go for all my races from a push. Um, even though like the officials were there and stuff. So I don't know, I can't decide if it was more funny or embarrassing. So, um, yeah, that's probably one of my favorite times. <laughs> I, I feel like I've seen so many swims start like that where you do have to, you know, someone has a hand or a foot thing and they have to start from the wall, but you got through it. You're better for it. I assume. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh michael last but not least yeah so my favorite swim story is probably there was a meet where i had like the 100 back and then right after it was the 100 free or like i thought they were back to back for some reason so i like warmed down from the 100 back i run up to the blocks for the for what i thought was the 100 free like i wasn't looking at the scoreboard or anything and because the scoreboard said like boys 10 and under like 50 free and so um I didn't even notice, like, I didn't even notice, like, hey, these kids are a lot shorter than me. They're a lot younger because I was, like, I was just in the zone when I was ready to go. And so I, like, get up on the blocks, and um, I dive in and do a – I, like, do a 50. And I'm, like, way ahead of these kids. And then I turn to go into the 75, and I'm, like, looking around, and there's, like, no one there. So I stop halfway on the 75, and, like, I'm in the wrong event, like, the wrong heat, like, wrong age group. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing, but – pretty funny <laughs> sounds like a good learning experience uh look at the scoreboard everyone uh, yeah before before your next race uh 
We made it. That was awesome, you guys. Kyle, Lance, Michael, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today. It was awesome to talk to you, and, and hopefully we will see you on a pool deck very, very soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Take care. Yeah, thank you for having us. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.